You know, we're talking about a, uh, a very crude uh, lower bound for the uh, some of the divisors formula. This is sometimes called the sigma formula. Now, sigma of five just means to sum up the two divisors of five. Now, five is prime, and so what is that? One plus five uh, equals six. Now, this is true of any prime number. In other words, it's always going to be p plus one. So uh, that's equal to six. Again, y'all, sigma function, you sum up the divisors, including the number itself of, of any natural number. All right, now let's, let's try out one a little more, slightly more involved. Uh, sigma 20. We can just write these out. There's a way to get this from the prime factorization, but we'll just write, write them out. Uh, sigma 20 is equal to 1 is always going to be in the list. And we have 2, of course. 3 is not a divisor of 20. Uh, whoops, this is plus, sorry. Uh, plus 2, 3 is not in the list, so we have plus uh, 4. Plus 5. plus 10, plus 20. Okay. Now, let's see, what does all that add up to? 20, 35. So here, folks, I'm getting 1, plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7, 12. So I'm getting 32 here. That's equal to 32. The sum of the divisors is 32. All right, now if you take a look at what we're going to prove, it's a fairly straightforward proof, but it says the sum of the divisors of any composite, any composite number, uh, in any non-prime number, is always going to be greater than or equal to n square root of n plus 1. Now notice right here for, for this particular problem, we would have 20 uh, plus uh, the square root of n. 32 is somewhere between 5 and 6, right? Somewhere between 5 and 6. So we'll say just approximately 5.5, just for, you know, it's just an approximation here. So we'll say approximately 5.5. Okay, again, uh, 32 is between 25 and 36. And so maybe 5.7, who knows? Okay, plus 1. And since we're in a rounding kind of mood today, uh, this would be approximately... Uh, 27. So you see what I mean by crude? Our uh, lower bound uh, gives you 27, but it's actually 32 in this case, okay? But let's go ahead and see why this is true, all right? Let's see why this um, lower bound is true. And also it happens to be exactly true for a perfect square, and you can check that out. Well, like for, for a prime square, like 5 squared, it would be exactly true for 5 uh, squared 25, because 25 is what... Uh, 25, 5, and 1 are the only uh, divisors of, and so you would get 26, and that's exactly what you get when you put 25 in here. So equality does hold, I think, when you square a prime, okay? Now let's just take a look at the proof real quick. It's kind of, um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. This is literally the definition of what we mean by a composite number. For example, uh, 2 times 4 equals to 8. 8 certainly not a prime. That's because it's the product of two natural numbers that are, greater than 1 and less than 8. Okay, so 8 is a perfectly fine example of a composite number because it admits this uh, factorization. Now let's take a look at the, this is kind of the crux of the proof, and it's sort of a, a well-known proof in number theory. Um, one of the divisors has to be less than or equal to the square root of n, because consider the alternative, which would be d1, both d1 and d2, and I'll just delimit de with the commas here. If D1 and D2 were both strictly greater than 1, which is the opposite of this condition right here, right? Uh, if they were both strictly greater than root n, okay, then the product would absurdly be uh, D1, D2, uh, D1 times D2 uh, would be, let me write this down. That should be times, y'all, sorry about that. Uh, sorry, D1 times D2 would be strictly greater than N, right? Which is impossible, right? 
you know, sorry, this whole sloppy there. But uh, one of the uh, divisors of a composite number has to be less than or equal to the square root of n. It would be equal, again, on squares. But uh, why? Because if you take both of them to be strictly greater than n, okay, then their product, d1 times d2, would be greater than n, right? Well, no can do because we know that's, that's what we mean by composite number. Their product is equal to the number, okay? So from that observation or from that just brief little lemma, I guess, we can see that d1, d2 is equal to n implies that d2 is greater than or equal to n, okay? And that's got to be true, right? If, if d1 is less than or equal to root n, okay, d2 has no choice but to be strictly greater than or equal to n, all right? And so that kind of takes care of business as far as the problem goes, and we see that uh, sigma n is greater than or equal to d2, which we know has to be greater than or equal to n, all right? And so we, uh, from this, this uh, inference, if you will, leads to the result we're looking for, okay? So we proved it, what we set out to prove. Again, it's not particularly exciting, but it was a problem from uh, Titu Andriscu's um, number theory book. Okay, so we'll write QED, thus we have demonstrated. And just, just to give you a little bit of a feel, like what I was saying earlier, uh, the equality would happen at a number like, let me, let me do 49, okay? 49 is a prime squared, right? And the sum of it, sigma of uh, 49 is just one. Uh, plus 7. Seven's the only divisor of 49, right? Other than 49 and 1. So you see you actually get the equality here because this is what? Uh, 57? 49, 56, 57? It's 5, 7. So that's just summing up the divisors, but notice that's exactly what you get right here. Uh, 49 plus 7 uh, plus 1 is equal to 57. So I think that's the only time you have the equality condition is when you have a prime square. All other cases, uh, you're going to have others. You're going to have other divisors. But for prime squares, that's when the equality condition holds. But anyway, we proved what we set out to prove, and that's that.